guys, and welcome back to this week's episode of As the Universe. <laughs> um, from the comments we had, we uh, could read that you guys would like to have Tom back and ask some of his questions. So we invited him back in the studio and uh, I'm super excited what he has on the program for today. So Tom, yeah. the, the questions and everything is in your hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's um, in fact, it's about the, the last part of the, our first interview. And then you did say that your mission is uh, to reconnect the grid on the earth. Eh? That's already known. You are also write it in the book that you mm -hmm. have written, the book, I am Elisa. Uh, but you also said in that interview that you were part of creating the grid long ago, not as a person, but as a light energy form. And I would like to interview you about the grid and about pyramids and also about human DNA. <laughs> Into this. So, of course, now, the planet Earth is an unbelievable, beautiful planet. And uh, yeah, my first question is, <laughs> who created the Earth? <laughs> Maybe it's a very difficult. Uh... We did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now you're, yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm pushing too many buttons here. But um, can you okay. tell something about it? Yeah, let me see how I can explain it. Um, when you're outside of this universe, everything is energy. It's vibration and the flow. It's created with frequencies and density, densis, den density of the vibration. So it becomes physical matter. We talked about this before. Um, if I look into how Earth were created and who created it, you can say the main creator is always source. So the main creator is source. In order of making the choices of how the planet should function and which things there's on the planet, you have under source or after source is created, you have created other entities. Oh, it's gonna be hard to explain. <laughs> yeah, I understand. I understand. <laughs> you, um, and and some of these entity, these are responsible for new creating new universes where you are able to unfold certain scenarios that will help the universe grow. So those who were a part of the energy construction that construct the, the planet earth is basically an energetic form with a lot of consciousness that were willing to play out a project there has been other projects and some of them have fallen and other of them is still here um, so often when we hear these aliens talking about uh, that what once happened is supposed to not happen again and, and planets that has been for falling and into the gut into galaxy war and all these things that people talk about um, it's because that some of these projects didn't last so long. And when I say it didn't last so long, it still lasts like a million of years. It really depends on how you perceive uh, timelines. But on Earth, we have this linear thing with an ending and a start, and, and we are everything that happens in between. Yeah. And so uh, when the Earth was created, also the grid was created. You. Uh, say in your book that in fact the original grid because there were more grids or three grids you say in your book but uh, in time of the earth but uh, the original gr grid was created together with the creation of the earth and now my question is why was the grid uh, connected why was it so important so the grid was a part of the balance flow of energy and vitality all around the planet a part of the grid was also so that certain aliens could travel in and out <laughs> between multiverses. Mm -hmm. So it has like different um, uh, different rules, different uh, assignments. But the the main grid or the main thing that I always feel drawn to reconnect to is is this thing about harmony uh, around the globe. It's when everything once everything was breathing in the same way 
and was moving in the same flow. And then we have the AIDS, AIDS, and something else happened. And then we have the separation. And within separation, there is also creation, of course, because when you separate, you become very strong, this or very strong, that. Oh, let's see if I can close the sound. Okay, uh, the last thing I said. Um, okay, so we what we had was once everything was floating in the same vibration, there was vitality all over, there was oneness, even in, in how the earth was created. This thing about circle of life that also kind of made sense in how everything was in totality. Then we had the ice age, and there was something with some aliens and perhaps and hubs and the fall of Atlantis. And, and we were separated. And within separation is also growth, because when, when you separate, then you're forced to specialize in certain fields. So somewhere there's hot, somewhere there's cold, somewhere there is a uh, desert, and, and the same goes with the people. So in separation was growth, and we could see this for a long period of time. But as, as it is with everything, when and you, you reach a point in that growth where it's kind of worn out. And there has been so much hardship on earth for a long time. And it's about time to reconnect uh, to the balance and reconnect to growth within the totality and within the oneness. Because we've been growing as individually, indi individualists from an ego perspective for centuries and now it's time to remember what oneness means and what it can bring, not only to ourselves, but to each other and, and the whole planet. Yeah, so if you could say, in fact, that uh, the grid is kind of a, a blueprint for the planet in some way? Mm, yes and no, because a mm -hmm. blueprint, you, you don't break a blueprint. <laughs> but yes, in, in, the, in, in the very first creation of earth we had already created the grids and the grids has been used for different things uh, along the path because when you separate the grid then you have some places there's power places you have some places that the aliens learn to use for traveling in and out of dimensions and stuff yeah. like that so later it was uh, used for different things yeah yeah and uh, but now we are in a time that the grid is more balanced or more flow flowing transformed we are in the time where it's supposed to reconnect to it so it can be more balanced yeah and that we're yeah. not there yet it's, it's no. that that's kind of the role of what we have to do yes but will that uh, the the transformation of the grid also uh influence the human consciousness on earth yeah. yes because within the within the memories of stones and within the memories of of what has been created from the days of dawn lies a lot of consciousness and when, when we can link to that we link to a bigger part of our region which means that we can tap out of the somebody called which means that we can tap out of the, the matrix that we are playing in and linking to a deeper part of understanding of our true selves. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, the pyramids are part of the grid, right? And also the lie lines. Yes. And what is the exact role of the, and also, of course, a strong energetic place, but what is the role of the pyramids in the, in the, in the grid? I will we call it binding points. So if you have a grid that is built up by wires and, and water is flowing in the wires, they all have to meet in these power places, like batteries linking together. Mm -hmm. So I, I will call it like binding places of these uh, sources. And because it's binding places, it means that the, the consciousness and the energy, the batteries are always stronger there than where the water is flowing, where the grids is flowing. Um, so there lies a lot of awareness there from the day of dawn. Then these pyramids have also been used for travel dimensions and for reaching higher consciousness and going into the inner earth. So it's been used as different forms of portals as well. Yeah. Later, because when you have power places, you can basically use that energy for 
I want to say what it's created for, but you can also use it for other things. So to be honest, then just when you are in power places, you can use the energy of which it holds. Yeah. When you go vibrationally matched to it, of course. So what is the last thing you said? Uh, when you are vibrationally matched to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and uh, in your book, I did read that you say that the pyramids were built before Atlantis and also even after Atlantis did fall. Is that right? I did, uh, or am I not right? The pyramid, well, it's, it depends how you look at it. So yeah. I look at the grids and the grids binding points. This was created already when we created Earth. If you yeah. look at how they use it now, <laughs> it was more in line with the time of Atlantis. And of course, a lot of the, the pyramid was created later because you find the, the binding points and then you create the, how do you say, the material matters above it because you learn how to use it for nutrition or for gateways or etc. So yes, actually it's true what I said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and now, then the, for example, the pyramids in Egypt, uh, the, the mm -hmm. uh, famous pyramids of Giza, were they built the, after Atlantis? Or Atl Atlantis, you know that? Or was it before? I guess it was after, but maybe I'm wrong of that. Energetic form was there during Atlantis. Physical form, the way we perceive it today, was after Atlantis. Okay. And who built them? Well, which part of them? The first part or the second part? I, you mean the, the, the first part is the energetic part and the second part is the material part, right? That's what mm -hmm. you mean. Yeah. Yes. Both? Yeah. Well, I would say the aliens built them. Yeah. 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 Aliens from where? Uh, most of the time you say out of space, but the funny thing is my, many of them was here before we were here. There were taller, bigger creations, different shapes of faces, um, different way of interacting, different way of combining matter together so they could form these stones and pyramids. Um, The thing about naming them, they always look at me like, <laughs> I see their shapes and forms, and then they go like, yeah, so if you want to tell our name, then look at us and, and say, <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what your name is. But a lot of people talk about the Arcturians was here and the yeah. Syrians was yeah. here and etc. If I look into the shapes and the forms, I can understand that perception. Uh, for me, when I think about a series, I see the energetic forms always. And I link up with that when I see them uh, on human ground, creating the knowledge and the awareness of which when they were here, they have taken a form of physical matter that is more uh, unrecognizable for me. But I still know that that is them. But this is how humans perceive them. And humans perceive them as taller beings um, with very shiny eyes. <laughs> um, and some of them comes with the knowledge of heart and some of them comes with the knowledge of technology. So a lot of that technology we have today is technology that has been here since forever, actually. Just that we are first able to tap into it now. Yeah, but uh, you also did say that first they made it in an energetic way. And later on in a more material way, is that right? That's what you said. So in creation on Earth, when yeah. we created Earth. Yeah. In but pyramids, I mean pyramids, sir. Huh? Yeah, wait. So when yeah. we created Earth, uh, like I told in the beginning of the interview, we created the energetic grid that binded the whole Earth together. They did so that animals could live everywhere. And these organisms of which were created at that point could grow slowly step by step because the um, the binding of the grid was intended so so at that point we already had the energetic points 
Yeah, yeah, but, but my, my, where I want to go is um, uh, did they make uh, the pyramids first as an energetic form which did materialize in stones or did they use stones which they could uh, uh, levitate and so they could make the pyramids by levitation of material. The the energetic form was there first. Yes. The stones yes. were yeah. built after. And the stones, the constructions of the stones, the geometric forms, uh, is a part of what is needed in order of levitations and traveling dimensions and so forth. Yes. And it, uh, but it, the, 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 the interesting thing is how were they made? Uh, because I have read in some books that they were made by... The, because the stones are very heavy, right? And, and the, as material. Oh, that's where you yeah. go. I was like, why is he asking the same question? <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but were they capable to, to, uh, to uh, build the pyramids by levitation of the stones? This was not yet clear for me. You know that? When I, but it's, it's funny because when I look at it, it looks like a different way of creating. When I look at it, for example, the construction of the stones, I talked about this before, it's three, five different materials that's combined together in a different way than how we would do it today. It's like they can compress it with energy. Uh, you ask if they are levitating. If I look at it, they say we don't have to levitate in order of creating it. Exactly what they mean with that, I don't know. But, but it looks like... Um, They build it with energy. They are able to move it with energy. They know how to uh, use the energy differently. So yeah, yeah. the way that we carry things heavily, it doesn't look like that. It looks a lot more easy when they do it. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. using the energy from the source and the form. And, and because everything is, everything is energy from my right. one hand. My other hand, it's not just air and, and compressed atoms. It's it's energy, right? So Sorry. if you really know how to use the energy in your body, combining it from the source of the ground and materialize it a bit, you, you can move objects by using the energy between the two. Yeah. And, but I, that is such a big thing that we have forgotten. Yeah, now, but what? Yeah. Once I had a patient who could do this, he could move material things with, uh, with his energy. He was oh, a very strong cool. guy, yeah, a very interesting guy. It's called telekinesis. Eh? Uh, yeah. That's the name of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, now the um, the Earth has the uh, the lie lines and the pyramids, and uh, they also say that the Earth has uh, chakras. Mm -hmm. Some say that the Earth has seven chakras, which are very uh, important points. Mm -hmm. But in fact, the, the human body also has the meridians, uh, the meridians, the acupuncture meridians, and also the chakras. And they also they say they, we have seven chakras, that, that are the most famous chakras. Other spiritual uh, ways are saying that we even have 12 uh, chakras. I believe that's true. <laughs> I will also ask you something about the number of 12. But I first would like to uh, ask you something about uh, the, the DNA. <laughs> Because, uh, yeah, we, we talked about maybe the grid is some kind of blueprint for the Earth, or uh, which is not exactly that. But, but uh, in fact, the DNA is the blueprint for our human body, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, can you say, yeah, who created that? <laughs> we did. Yeah. So <laughs> It's the same thing. I mean, the way the that thing. Okay. Yeah. the way the earth is built yeah. organically, the way that the plants are built. If you take the composition, composition in a plant and how it, uh, what it's made from, it's exactly the same as a human. Only that our binding point is uh, iron, and the plant's binding point is, um, oh, I think, it's CO two or something i don't remember it there's like one component there's different but that is all 
every other way we are constructed the same way. So that's one thing. Another thing is if you look at the geometric forms inside of the creation of plants, animals, trees, humans, you, you see that everything is, is, is built up in the same form. There's very small differences that does that we are different creations, but essentially we are all part of the same um, ecosystem on Earth. Yeah, okay, yeah. The, the human DNA is right now, it's uh, uh, one helix with two chains. Uh -huh. And uh, the uh, spiritual uh, people say that uh, it can transform to the original state, which is six helixes with 12 chains. And then we uh, also have the, the number of 12. And so my question to you is, um, if, we, if the, the grid is more flowing, uh, it's going to flow more and the consciousness is rising on planet, is also the DNA transformed? The human DNA transformed from one helix with two chains to six helixes with 12 chains. Can if I look at the time, the time of Atlantis, I see how that people were more complete back then in the form. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, we let go of that in order of having the experience that we're having now. If I look into if we are connecting the whole grid together, if humans are ready to go back to that state of being i would have to say no not whole humanity is but it is a possibility because yeah. when the the energy is floating free on the planet we have the ability to tap into that and reconnect to that conscious awareness uh, and state of being but it will take a few generations to evolve back to that state if that humanity is ready for it. If I look into the possible outcome right now, and just to be honest, <laughs> a whole humanity is not ready for this whole, no. this level is not that high, but there is a percentage of the planet who have the knowledge and who is ready to make the shift. And if I look at the new souls that will be incarnated when we are after 2020, oh, where are we going? Thank you, later. So a lot of the new souls that will be incarnated has a higher level of consciousness and they are more spacey because we had agreed upon bringing more of that energy back into this planet. So in the future, it will be possible to go back into that state. But for now, um, not all humans are ready for it. No, okay, but maybe some humans will are will be ready for that and yeah. does that also mean that these people will realize more and more that we are multi-dimensional is that connected with the transformation of the dna that those we are, are multi-dimensional uh, entities beings? those who are those who are ready to shift to the 12 they already know that they're multiple dimensional yeah 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 okay yeah that is clear yeah um uh, and um, now we have something about the number 12, because uh, I, the, they say that there is a possibility that we have uh, six helixes with, uh, with 12 DNA chains, but we also have uh, also already uh, named that we have 12 chakras. Now we have also 12 astrological signs in the zodiac. We have 12 months, we have 12 musical tones, 12 hours. 12 dimensions, I don't know, sometimes I hear that. And even the, the, the year 2012, something would, uh, would happen. And by the way, you are born at 12th January. <laughs> I know, 12 is my favorite number. <laughs> but uh, what is the meaning of 12? Do we, can you tell something about that? Uh, do you know? Um, people always talk about these magic numbers being three, seven, nine, thirteen, and etc. For me, I see the number twelve, the number oh, and eleven. I'm sorry, yeah. but the number twelve is a part of the creation of the whole, the wholeness of the hologram, whatever that means. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I would say it belongs to the 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 essence of the creation of of this very planet system and how we build it up 
um, when I feel 12, I just feel wholeness. I, I, I really feel this complete circle in, in every sense and matter. And it's without any friction, it's without any growth or any lack. It's, it's just completeness. If I look into the other numbers that people see as holy, I, I see them connected to multiverses and universes and and how there is still ability to float with them. But the the twelfth is just completely harmony. Yeah, I mean, I, that is so interesting because uh, in in music you have uh, also twelve tones, and mm -hmm. when you go from the for example on the piano from the C to the to the next C, then you have uh, twelve tones. You are twelve half tones. Uh, further but then mm -hmm. the, the vibration is higher from the next C and then the next tone yeah, the, the C tone I mean and then again 12 half tones and then the the vibration is even more higher so that's so interesting and oh, that's it's cool. also so interesting what what these vibrations can do with uh, with humans with us just like colors and wow that uh, because everything is vibration it's so interesting all this kind of stuff <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, other question: Will the uh, will the poles shift? I mean, the North Pole and the South Pole. Do, like do you know? anytime soon, or? Yeah, I don't know. Some people say it will happen. It can happen in uh, in, in the coming time of transformation. Uh, um, I don't know. Maybe you know something. Can tell something about. It. I know. I don't know. As humans, we really like to dive into possible outcomes yeah. very much yeah. and, and make some of, of, of the, <laughs> the most um, epic and scary as something that we perceive as reality. And as more we, we, we put our focus on that, as closer it comes, because law of attraction is also a part of this game, you know. But if I look into the polarity, um it's not likely that they're gonna shift oh. anytime but there is like a lot of things going on and there is climate changes and there is a lot of changes going to happen in the coming years on so many different levels uh, and and the polar I changed is a possible outcome but it's not the one that i see as the most present one Interesting, yeah, interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, this is all, this is just, I cannot, of course there are more questions. We cannot do that <laughs> all in, in, in this interview. Um, but I think the most uh, things that I did want to ask, yeah, the, the, how the, the, the transformation of um, the grid, mm -hmm which you are part of, and um, is it transforming because of light beings like you, or is it also other cosmic impulses that go to the Earth, or is it also the human consciousness itself that will influence the grid, or is it all together? Exactly. The funny thing is all that... Together. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there is no difference because cosmic influence, like light beings, is also a cosmic influence. Uh, right, right. What yeah. is Im important is bringing back the awareness of the existence and also tapping into uh, listening to what they have to show and tell and let it flow through so it can rebind and reconnect. It is with, with the grid as it is within water. When you bring love to the water, the water changes its crystallizations and the vitality changes in the water. When you connect to the grid and connect to the consciousness in the grid with love, of course, it does exactly the same thing. So it opens the vitality uh, just like the water in the bottle does. Yeah, so now we are back to the most important thing, which I do completely agree with you, and that is, uh, that is love. All what what whatever exists, eh? love for ever everything that exists. I think that's that's a beautiful end for this interview. Yes, I'm I'm really warm and uh, ready to see the. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I would like to thank you very much, and uh, well, we will see again. <laughs> for sure, Bye -bye. thank you so much, Tom. I really love these questions because they're so out of the box. So. And, and yet in the box, but you know, I'm really grateful for it. And guys, 
I hope you love this interview as well and love that Tom was here as, uh, again. So just write in the comments below, let us know how you felt about it. Let us know how you perceive some of all these things that we went through. And I will see you next week. Doo doo!